Welcome to our lecture online. Quite often we get confused about the notation when we talk about derivatives. So here I try to explain. There's no need to get confused if you simply realize that there's a lot of different ways in which you could write the first derivative or the second derivative or the third derivative. So let's take a look and see how that is. So let's say we have a function, a function of the variable t and let's call the function x. So that's kind of the algebra notation. We have some function, we have an independent variable t, and we call it x. Sometimes we call it y, we call it z, we call it something else. So the function with the variable t is equal to t cubed plus 5t squared plus 6t plus 4. Or we can also write it as x of the variable t is equal to t cubed plus 5t squared plus 6t plus 4. And those two are exactly the same. Here we call it a function, there we call it x. But it's the same thing. So if we now take the derivative, we can take the derivative of the function, or we can take the derivative of x. We can write it as f prime, or f of t prime. So this is indicating, this gives you more information, that the function is of the variable x, I mean, uh, is of the variable t, but we don't have to write it. We can write it like this, we can write it like that, it means exactly the same thing. Or we can indicate that that function is x, and so we can take it as x prime, or x prime because x is a function of the variable t. And so again, all these things mean exactly the same thing. It's just a different way of writing the same thing. Or we can write the derivative of x with respect to time. We can, we can write it as df dt or dx dt. So all those various notations mean exactly the same thing. They're simply the derivative of the function with respect to time. We don't have as much information when we write it like this, a little bit more, because here we realize it's a, it's a function of t. But if we write it like that, we know that it's the, the derivative of the function with respect to time. And here, if t represents time, and here we have the derivative of x with respect to time. And so that way, if you write it like this, it gives you more information. This is actually my preferred method, but sometimes when we get a little bit lazy and want to be quick, we can write it like that. If we then take the second derivative, again, it applies the same way. F double prime, F double prime, but here we tell ourselves or tell the reader that this is a function of the variable t. We can write as x double prime or x double prime, and we know that the function is of the variable t. And here we specifically indicate that it's a second derivative of the function with respect to time, or the second derivative of x with respect to time. Again, all these different notations mean exactly the same thing. Going to the third derivative, then we use the triple prime. And then once we get to the fourth derivative, because once you start putting down four primes, it's hard to see there's four tick marks, they rather write this. But they put parentheses around it to indicate that this is not an exponent. This simply means the fourth derivative of the function f. The fourth derivative of the function f, we realize that the function is a function of the variable t, or it's called x, or x of the variable t. Or we can simply write it as the fourth derivative of the function with respect to time or the fourth derivative of x with respect to time. And then you can see that as you go into even higher order derivatives, the fifth order, it makes a lot more sense to write the number five than to put five different tick marks on there. You can see how it gets a bit laborious. Now there are not a lot of real world applications for third and fourth and fifth derivatives, of course. And so this is a little bit more theoretical than practical. We do, in very often, in very many cases, use the first and second derivative. In some rare cases, we use the third derivative as well. So at least now you know what the notation looks like, so you no longer have to sit there and scratch your head and go, I don't know what they're talking about. Different ways to write and explain the very same thing. And so now that we understand the notation, let's go look at some examples of how to actually apply the rules of taking higher order derivatives.